Hello, I'm Howard Stableford, and welcome to Concept Cars. And I'm Adrian Bell, and together we've another program's worth of amazing concept cars to show you. Some classic concepts, some brand new, but all pushing the frontiers of automotive design forward a little further. Between Adrian Bell and myself, we'll show you some amazing creations that we could be driving in the future. That's right, Howard. You know there are some incredibly talented people out there. Look at this sexy concept I spied at the New York Motor Show, created by your very own Jaguar. Company. It's called the Jaguar Concept 8, and it's been created from the base of the new XJ Long Wheelbase Saloon. It's given the designers an opportunity to transform the biggest car they've made into a luxurious concept. Looks good on the outside, but it's the detail inside of a luxury car that separates the wheat from the chaff, isn't it? I love this flap down compartment and the long center console area, similar to the Concept R and the rear seats are split to give that extra sense of luxury. But you know, I'm not sure about the red LED lighting strip all around the roof line. Jaguar tells me it's to help equate with the mood lighting you may find in a fashionable bar, but it's going to be so distracting at night. The Jaguar is a nice concept, but if you've tuned in to see some really, well, wacky stuff... And can provide you any type of experience in one go, like shampoo, you know, like three in one. You won't be disappointed this week. That's right. And for the really wacky, of course, we've got to travel to Japan. Where one night the bosses of Toyota and Sony were no doubt having a quick half of sake together and came up with a wonderful idea. They thought of creating a futuristic concept car for a computer game and then building it for a laugh in real life. And this is it. The Toyota Motor Triathlon Race Car. A weird off-road concept that has been designed for an imaginary automotive triathlon which races on and off-road, a racetrack and urban streets. We checked out Toyota's senior designer and asked him why he thought this concept car was like shampoo. What is the main idea of this car is to attract young people who is interested in the computer technologies and computer games to the hour stand and to say to them, look, Toyota is very technological, very looking forward company, very advanced, and can provide you any type of experience in one go, like shampoo, you know, like three in one. I, it's maybe a strange comparison, but it's like you get a product which is multifunctional. Wow, a multifunctional concept. Other cars, such as the Citroën Pluriel, have gone down this route, but this must be the first to be linked to a computer game. Basically, we started with this vehicle, we contacted Sony, they were interested, they developed the game, and now we have this product. Plus, some interesting uh, features like Mixed Reality, which was developed by Denso Company for Toyota, and uh, it's very highly technological uh, experience. The concept looks astonishing, but it can't be practical as there's no space for the engine. Until you realize there are four engines, one on each wheel. It's very interesting and unique experience because the car is not usual engine. So it has a hydrogen powered fuel cell. It's a four uh, engines in the wheels. It's a 500 horsepower. It's a very interesting weight distribution and as a two pilots the concept of the pilots is like in a fighter jet. So we have a joystick drive, we have a mixed reality technology, we have complex of the things in the car. Hey, hear that Howard? We're not drivers anymore, we're pilots. Cool. Yes, and you know, we all see these lovely concepts, but we can actually drive this one, albeit in a virtual world. Imagine now situation, we showing on the picture for young people, wow, we have this great car, you know, they go. So. What? Can we drive it? We say, no, you cannot drive it, but you can have it as a game. You know, so we don't want to wait 20 years for this technology, because this technology is 20 years from now available. We don't want to wait for this. We go, okay, we give you simulation, but in the future, when you will grow up, when you will be Toyota customer, we want you to come to our dealership and check it out real. The Toyota Motor Triathlon race car is the first of a new wave of Japanese design thinking. Well, let's continue our look at Japanese originality over at the Honda homestead. At first sight, Honda's ASM concept does seem quite cool. The interior looks very spacious, but it appears to hide it quite well on the outside. With big wheels and smooth contours, it all looks nicely in proportion. Now try to imagine being abducted by aliens. 
Then try to imagine being approached by the ASM concept at night with its full beams on. Notice any similarities? But it's only a spacecraft on the inside. The Honda ASM concept is a new people carrier for the 21st century, with seating for up to eight and using a V6 engine with variable cylinder management. Variable what? Variable cylinder management, my Canadian friend, which means that the ASM concept can run on fewer cylinders to conserve fuel and it's paired with an electric motor. So it's a hybrid? Absolutely, and with the success at last of the Toyota Prius, this Honda could be the hybrid breakthrough of the MPV world. Even if the back lights house more bulbs than a garden centre. But it doesn't look too radical for today's roads, unlike our next car, the Honda Imus. Now put this fat little snail on the road and heads will turn. It'd be like an onion ring at a donut party, just too savoury to fit in. However, I do quite like the interior. It's très moderne, in a somewhat futuristic sense. Inside the Honda IMAS, you're surrounded by road racing bicycles with shining parts shown to full advantage. Love the ultra-thin transparent instrument panel. Sure, and there's that gear stick. It's cool despite looking like a stork's head sitting on a silver plate. So why is the exterior so horribly offensive? I mean, admittedly, the roof might as well be a climbing frame and from the rear it looks like a suit of very advanced armor, but it's original so we can't complain too much. These guys are pushing the boundaries back, as is this next concept in the current Honda crop. The HSC, or Honda Sports Concept, has that ultra-fast, super-cool, sleek sort of look which, image-wise, puts it up against the likes of Ferrari's Enzo or the Koenigsegg CC8S. But Honda certainly know how to build a fast car, and it seems that they've opted to house the engine just in front of the rear axle, not unlike both their old and new NSX. And the interior looks good too. The icy blue dial set against the black leather trim, they add to a very slick image, lovely. Combine this with the streamlined ultra smooth exterior, and you've got one hell of a cool car. On to the Honda Kiwami. Now if this car was an animal, then it would definitely be a pig. Not so much because it's ugly and stinks, but simply because it should not have wheels attached. It seems like Honda have opted for a real animal of a car. It's big and heavy looking with nothing particularly desirable on the outside. It's very low down in appearance. Not that this isn't compensated for by nine miles of wheelbase. It doesn't get much better inside either. The speedometer's so far away, it might as well be on the car in front. And with fluorescent lights straight out of an operating theatre, the Honda Kiwami really doesn't score too well in my books. In the defense of Honda's farmyard animal, it does look very comfortable and seems terribly spacious. But really though, how can it not be? It's so long that one end could be registered in London and the boot in Glasgow. Maybe we're just ill-accustomed to this new age of car though. Maybe Honda knew something we didn't. These little LCDs are a nice addition, but as the saying goes, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it'll still be swine with wheels. But we come to praise Honda, not to bury it. For in our finale of Honda Concepts, I present a concept with no wheels at all. Now that's a concept. Uh, Howard, why are we showing a guy in a robot suit dancing with kids? This is a genuine robot. You'd never get anyone so thin to fit inside, would you? I mean, look at the legs. True, but why would a car company want to put cash into creating robots? This is one of the intelligent humanoid robots, which is, and I quote, capable of interpreting the postures and gestures of humans and moving independently in response. But you haven't answered the question. What will they learn about cars from this? 16 years of research and now they have robots that can confidently walk upstairs and even interact with humans as if it's real. Honda's dream is to design a robot that can duplicate the complexities of human motion and genuinely help people. I mean, hey, look, this robot can even fetch a newspaper. Howard, a dog can do this? Do you want to put them out of a job? Okay, well, fetch this lady's glasses as well, without any canine saliva on. But why is Honda Motor Company developing robots? They could uh, drive test cars, I suppose. But you're right, let's show the folks at home a Honda concept with wheels, the all-new Honda Jet. Over the last few years, Honda has been quietly developing a 6-8 to eight place, very light, twin-jet concept plane. 
powered the programs called Concept Cars. But look, this jet is unique in having an over-the-wing engine configuration. With no carry-through structure needed in the aft fuselage for any engine pylons, you get a full-width cabin right to the back, giving more interior space. Hooray! But you're right again, of course. So join us in part two of Concept Cars when we show you the lines of more Concept Cars from Japan. So we'll see you soon for more from Concept Cars. Hello and welcome back to Concept Cars. This week we're focusing on the amazing new ideas and technologies coming from Japanese companies. When it comes to concept cars, these babies are planned, developed and built in enormous secrecy and at enormous expense. So Nissan must have had their heart in their mouth the day they agreed to drive their precious new Qashqai around London for the cameras. Absolutely, but we're very grateful because it's fascinating to see this unusual shape floating around London traffic. We caught up with one of the design team to find out more about this compact crossover car. With Qashqai they wanted us to design a car that's a new niche. They wanted to find a new way of doing a small sized car and then something, a new spin on that type of car for people that want practicality but also fun and people that have a life that's less ordinary. Some, they have activities that they want to go out and do but they also want to use it for say commuting to work every day. So we wanted to try and find a new niche. But why are these car designers always looking for compromises? I agree, surely you'll end up with a monster that will appeal to nobody. It's always a risk that if you, you, if you try and please everyone, you'll end up pleasing no one. I think what we're trying to do though is get the best of two worlds, which is this kind of tough off-roader feel and the strength and reassurance that you can get from that and the, muscu and the muscularity that you get visually in the car. Um, but also get the practicality of a, of a, a small and medium-sized hatchback and the, the everyday functionality that a car like that can bring. The shape is gorgeous, futuristic, very sporty, and I'd buy a car that had a rear hatch that opened like this, wouldn't you? You look at the top half of the car, there's a, a very streamlined and dynamic line to it. And then if you look at the lower half of the car, the wheel arches and so on, you've got quite muscular, tough wheel arches. And that's, that's the kind of thing it is. It's, I'd say it's less of a, a compromise, more of a, a crossover. It's kind of a, a Jekyll and Hyde, really. It's hopefully the best of both worlds. But the unusual thing about the Nissan Qashqai is that there's no pesky B-pillar in the middle of the car. Why the heck did they do this? The rigidity of the car will be like jelly, surely. Holy scuttle-shake, Batman! What we wanted was the maximum ease of access and flexibility of the interior space. So for that we decided we had to get rid of the, the, the B-pillar. We had to open up the car like that with the doors that open like, a, like carriage doors almost. Um, what we've also got is a, is a long beam down the centre of the car which acts in two, in two ways. One to strengthen the car like a spine but also to support the seats which can fold up in the interior. So we've actually got two benefits from that. It counters the, the loss of rigidity that you can get by removing the B-pillar, but it also acts to give us a new flexible type of interior to the car, a new type of seating configuration, which hopefully allows people to use it as they want rather than use it in a way that's been prescribed by a manufacturer. We asked Clive what his favourite parts of the interior of this concept were. Again with the interior of the car we tried to get this uh, this dual character in. We tried to get a car that was, when you're on your own, it's a driver's car. There's a, an asymmetrical sweep which wraps around the driver, hugging close to them. But it also leaves the gap between the driver and the passenger open and unimpeded. So when you're with more people, with your friends for instance, it's easy to turn around and talk to them and that space doesn't feel blocked off. It's, it's a car for single-minded drivers and sociable people as well. It's, we also try to divide up the interior graphically by, for, the, for the passenger environment, running a soft red band around that side of the car to distinguish it from the driver's side. And we picked up on a lot of graffiti art that we saw around the studio in London and tried to give that, give that some of that feeling to the interior. We tried to give some of that more urban feel to the, to the car. Howard, this guy's kidding us. Sure, the design is influenced by street graffiti. What next, for heck's sake? Soon they'll be polishing cars with steel wool to give it a distressed look. Anyway, we salute Nissan for this wonderful concept, the very first designed in Nissan's all-new London design studio. But for outright wackiness, how about this crazy concept called the Micra? They'll never get to build this dumb-looking motor. 
Uh, Adrian, this may look strange to your North American eyes, but this is the production version of the current Nissan Micra, one of Europe's top city cars? Get out of it. If I came up with styling like this at a Detroit design convention, I'd be run out of town in shame with a stale bagel tied around my neck. It looks as nutty as the Pontiac Aztec that bombed over here in recent years. I drove one of them in Detroit and people were lining up to laugh and point. Well, the great thing is that Nissan have gone one step nuttier with this concept that they say is going to be made in limited numbers for the public. It's called the Nissan Micra R and it's their craziest road legal Micra ever. R or ah is what you'll be screaming when this little baby takes you to 60 in less than 5 seconds and on to 150 miles an hour top speed. The original concept has been worked on by RML who ran Nissan's British Touring Car Championship in the 90s. In conjunction with Nissan's designer Christopher Wrights, they stripped the engine out from under the bonnet and shoved it where the back seats were. This new mid-engine version, with a six-speed gearbox and a sequential shift system, was found to be really hot. So, with a neat paint job and stretched out wheel arches, nobody is in any doubt. Now, if you Brits think you have wide motorways, you should come over here. In North America, we have very wide multi-lane freeways, and if you don't have strict lane discipline, accidents happen very easily. Nissan has a luxury car division in the States called Infinity. They've been working on the very first ever passenger car lane departure warning system, and they're testing it on the 2005 FX SUV. It's a high-tech gadget intended to give sleepy or distracted drivers a wake-up call. This system works at a speed of above 45 miles an hour and the driver is alerted or warned by a uh, first an indicator on the uh, dash panel and then an audible warning buzzer. It's not going to prevent you from actually going into the next lane but it does give you a warning that you're starting to go or drift into that other lane of travel. The statistics are sobering. In the USA alone, over 100,000 crashes a year are because of driver fatigue, where vehicles drift out of lanes. California-based company Iteris, the system's developer, hopes it will help bring these figures down. We feel that this could be the most important innovation to car safety since the seatbelt. Wow, that's quite a claim. The biggest automotive safety device since seatbelts. So how does it work? Well, there's a small video camera mounted behind the rearview mirror which tracks the visible lane markings. An onboard computer monitors these images and along with speedo data, lights up an indicator and sounds a warning noise through the hi-fi system if you drift off lane. So this new gizmo will help to promote good driving as well. Nissan and Infiniti says that the lane departure warning system is the latest weapon in their arsenal of safety gear. Infinity prides itself on being a technological leader within the luxury market with features such as intelligent cruise control, advanced airbag systems, rear view monitor, voice navigation systems. The addition of lane departure warning is just another first for Infinity. Let's finish this section staying in North America where the 2004 Toronto Auto Show had a selection of some sexy new concept cars. In form, power and opulence, the 2003 Cadillac 16 embodies the timeless qualities of an exceptionally luxurious super sedan with its sleek gemstone appearance and new V16 engine. This concept with its retro bonnet panels is a cross between a limo and an office. This is a huge automotive statement with a grill that they're actually considering using on production caddies of the future. Struth, you could barbecue a buffalo on this grill. And here at Toronto is the Subaru B9SC concept. Not exactly a name you'll remember, but it's not a bad effort when you see it in the metal. Symmetrical all-wheel drive, height adjustable suspension and large wheels with run-flat tyres give the Subaru B9SC concept trail driving capability, making it a sports car for all roads. The concept vehicle's lower body features a special protective paint that also wraps over the upper body behind the doors to provide unity to the design. This is the Chevrolet Super Sport Concept, or the unfortunately named Chevy SS, which is a contemporary four-door family sedan turned sports car. 
it packs rear-wheel drive with a high-technology version of the legendary small-block V8 and boasts high-performance suspension and brakes to match. I love the melted look of this Mitsubishi concept truck. The Mitsubishi Sport Truck concept features a pickup bed with the versatility to be more saloon or more truck, depending on the driver's preference. The glass between the cabin and bed flips up so that passengers in the back seat have open air motoring. The tailgate powers down and retracts beneath the floor of the bed. Lovely! But the great news for the UK at the Canadian Auto Show this year was at the World Automotive Design Competition. It was British Car Design in the spotlight as the School of Art and Design Coventry University won four out of the eight prizes this year. Leon Combin, a third-year transportation design student, won the overall grand prize of $10,000 for his portrayal of what a Land Rover would look like in the year 2015. Blake Cotterill, also a third-year student in the same faculty, won the Best Application of Technology Award for his concept of a Red London double-decker bus in the future, while Coventry University itself won the Best Design School Award over 19 other schools from around the globe. This is the third year in a row that Coventry University has won a World Automotive Design Competition Award, so well done to all concerned. And it shows that little old Britain is still a very powerful player in the world automotive business. We still have an awful lot of talent right here in the UK. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this week's Concept Cars. Join Adrian and myself next time for some more beautiful, bizarre, or just plain balmy creations. Take care. See you soon. <laughs>